Can you feel it? The beckoning call of the wild. The kindling in your spirit when you hear the untamed howls of the wilderness. The immolation in your blood as the thrill of the hunt pours over you. Smoldering remains of your enemies lay in waste behind as you conquer and bond with beasts of unwavering loyalty and ferocity. And only whispers dare call your name as all fear the swift death that falls from your aim. For you are the hunter. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Cloak and Quiver podcast. My name is Solar, and it's good to be back. This is episode nine of the show, and uh, it uh, it's great. <laughs> I bit my tongue this week, so I might have a little bit of a wh- oh my gosh, a lisp because my tongue is like massively swollen. I know it's a really weird way to start out the show, but I just want to let you guys know. If it's unbearable to listen to this week's podcast, I don't blame you, but it's really embarrassing because I just like, I was eating and bit the tongue and now I can't speak. So welcome though. Thank you guys for tuning in for this week's show. Um, Got a lot of news to talk about, tons of alpha information and um, a lot of listener questions as well. So that's really nice. Um, Before we get started though, I wanted to talk about a few things. First one is, sorry that there hasn't been a show in the last uh, about week and a half or so. I could not find time to record at a reasonable hour. It was either like I was 6 in the morning or 3 at night, and that was just too much for me. I, I just could not do it. So, But I found time today after I got home from work, and I'm really excited to get back in the swing of things, and we have lots of good stuff to talk about this week, which is really nice as well. Um, and another exciting thing, guess what? The website is launched. Uh, cloakandquiver.com is now live. Um, it looks good, but it does not look great because I'm still working on it. There's a lot of things uh, about WordPress that I'm still learning. And uh, Ben Dack over at Eyes of the Beast has a beautiful website. He's helping me out with some of them as well. Um, one of the things about the site, though, is it's just going to be a place for hunter resources. Uh, I have a nice list of resources already built up there. There is, you know, you know where to get in touch with the show, RSS feeds, YouTube, iTunes, all the links are there. Um, there's a contact form where you can get a hold of me, the show, things like that. It's just a, it's just a well-rounded website. But I don't blog much. I never have blogged much. Um, but what I wanted to do, what I wanted to kind of run by you guys, is I would like there to be user submissions to the show. Um, anything that you guys you think is worthy of typing up um, or sending to me, like, okay, hey, here's my transmog that I really love. I'll give a little write-up of where to find the pieces of gear, send a few pictures in so I can put them up, and I'll be have, you know, I'll say, like, oh, this is Awesome Hunter's transmog submission, and you'll have your own article. Um, it, because the thing about this show, this is the podcast for the Hunter community by the Hunter community. Um, and I really want to kind of exemplify that with the website. So if you guys want to write an article on how you do an encounter or maybe like like I said, transmog or you wrote a great article about a pet you tamed or a story, it can be anything Hunter related. I, I would imagine just about anything Hunter related and I would like to put it up on the website. Uh, no, you know, it could be small, it could be big. I want contributions to, to, you know, to be able to share in our community and I think that's actually something that... Um, I don't know if that's been done before, but I would really like to give it a shot. So, you know, join us in this adventure of the cloakandquiver.com website. Uh, and I would really like to get that started. So I would appreciate if you guys maybe had a contribution to send into the show. Put it in the email, send it away, and I'll get it up as soon as I can. So, um, heck yeah, I'm interested and excited in all the things that we, we're going to be able to see and, and get out of this. So, Oh, and one more thing. I, I, d- I usually don't like to say stuff like this, but just because I have had people ask, I wanted to let you guys know. Um, there is a PayPal donate button on the bottom of the website. If you are interested in extending your patronage to the show, I have had a couple of individuals say, you know, Solar, thank you for helping me so much with my Hunter. You know, where can I, you know, you know, send, send money was really what it was. And, you know, I said, look, there is a lot of ways to help the show and the community without sending in money, um, by telling other hunters, by telling your guildmates, by sharing. That's how we grow our community. But, I mean, there are people who did, that wanted to send in a toss I don't even know how to say this, because it makes me feel bad saying it, but the, for those that were interested, there is a PayPal button on the bottom of the website, if you so wish. Certainly not, you know, I'm not saying, I need money. It, it's just, it's there if you want it. So thank you guys very much, and I want to say, again, I appreciate our community so much and what we can become and what we are 
and you know hunters are the best darn thing in the universe so rock on right awesome okay so let's let's move on there's one more thing i want to talk about is the all hunter uh tier 14 raid that we had planned i remember telling you guys a couple shows back that there was a horde version already in progress or at least it was being talked about and i had talked to the raid leader about you know hey you know let's kind of knock heads together and see what we can do I'm not saying that it didn't work out. He just wanted, like, a crazy high item level, and I didn't know how many people I could actually reach out to with that item level threshold. However, um, Ricket and Shoot and a lot of prominent hunters and other top ten guilds like Duality and Midwinter and um, Blood Legion, Artemis Howl was in there as well, they got together and they did this, and they ran this content, and it was pretty awesome to see, I gotta say. So I'll put a link um, to that uh, stream on the website and then as well as on the Twitter feed and the YouTube link. So you guys can actually watch uh, 25 Hunters take on uh, Tier 14 raid content. And let me tell you, it was a real treat to watch. Something like this has never been done for the Hunter class. And like seeing when they put down like 25... Um, there were 75 traps on the ground at one time at one point, like including binding shots and flares. And it just looked really cool. And they were successful in all of their runs. Like most of the encounters lasted like... A minute long. It was pretty crazy, but it was really fun to watch, and I want you guys to take a look at that because I thought it was, you know, it's history, right? It hasn't been done before. Um, and I know we wanted to do one, and I said I wanted to do mine on Alliance because, I mean, I'm not discriminating, but there are a lot of prominent hunter personalities on the Alliance side, and I wanted to be able to do one for you guys and with you guys as well. And um, my work schedule is going to uh, tone down drastically in early August, and I would like to do our run in early August, so stay tuned for that information. But let's get into the show, the big part of the show. Um, one thing that really stuck out to me in the news in the past couple of weeks that what I did was I went through all the new updates and changes and warlords and stuff like that, and I just took out the things that have been changed. So we're dealing with the most recent hunter changes on Warlords of Draenor Alpha right now. And the big one that I thought we finally got some clarification on uh, has been the survival spec. And we've been on the show discussing how the lack of the DPS cooldown was a little concerning to us because we wanted to be able to have that flexibility uh, with our talent trees and stuff like that. And Celestalon finally did shed some light on this, and there is no replacement for Bear Trap Insight. The cooldown for survival has been lost. And this is due to the fact that they removed the readiness uh, secondary stat from the Hunter, or for all, excuse me, all of the uh, classes that's out of the game now. And because Bear Trap was so influenced by the readiness stat, which was re reduction of cooldowns, was what that stat did, they got rid of it. Um, and Celestalon said, survival opts to focus on sustained damage without burst cooldowns. However, if the situation calls for a burst damage cooldown, there are a few available via talents. And this is exactly what we shit on the show. Um, shit on the show. I'm sorry, I really am. This is exactly what we had mentioned on the show, and I agree that it is, I'm glad that there's finally been some clarification. I may not like it a whole lot, because I believe that each talent having one DPS cooldown and then opting to take other talents as necessary is, uh, it, it adds more variety to the gameplay. Um, I, I believe that strongly. But at least now we've been told that survival has character. Its character is dealing sustained damage. There's, remember, survival has no kill shot, and it has no burst damage. It is a flat line. It is sustained damage over time, which I understand now, and I can agree with that. I just may not like it. But um, interesting stuff for survival. We were kind of unclear as to why they were doing this, and now it's been, you know, hey, you know, survival is going to be sustained damage over time. It has no kill shot. It has no burst. And this is what the specs flavor is going to be. Um, and I can get down with that. At least we just, it, what we wanted was clarification, and we finally got it. So that's that's been nice. And the next thing I want to talk about isn't a huge change, but I wanted to use it as an example. Um, a lot of the Warlords of Draenor um, dynamic has been ability pruning and cleaning up of class uh, rotations and spellbooks and stuff like that. And they put Stampede in the talent tree because they thought it was too much clutter for some specs. And I and I am and my rebuttal to that was as a five minute cooldown, no, it is not clutter. It is a DPS cooldown. You choose, you know, when to opt to use it. And that was my stance on that. Um, a, a fantastic example of how ability pruning and cleaning up should be done is what they just did to revive pet and mend pet. And what they did was they combined them. So if you have your pet alive it will use Mend Pet. If your pet is dead, it will use Revive Pet. They just combined two buttons into one, and that is a successful way to do ability pruning. Um, I'm not saying they need to go back on Stampede in the talent tree. I'm just saying, hey, look, you did it right this time, and I think that's a really nice change. It, it makes things a lot easier. Um, I gave it some thought, and I was wondering if there were any other abilities that could kind of work like this or similar to this, and 
I couldn't really think of any, actually. I think this might have been the only case where this was pretty acceptable or a really good idea. I thought that maybe we could do something about Trap Launcher, you know, just making it, um, like, always active on the Hunter. But then I thought maybe some people want the luxury of putting the trap immediately on their feet with only the click of a button, which is handy in some situations, I, I imagine. But yeah, I just thought that was kind of a nice thing that they did with uh, Men Pet and Revive Pet. I'm like, oh, hey, you know, that's that's the way to do it. So uh, let's talk a little bit about um, marksmanship, though, shall we? I, I say this with a bit of an uh, because marksmanship kind of got gutted, if you ask me, with this uh, with the latest build. Um, and here's why I think this. And, and the biggest reason I'm most disappointed is because of the AoE. Marksman's AoE was supposed to be really awesome with piercing shots also being applied, you know, the bleed uh, for your multi-shots ability, so you'd also have that bleed while you're AoEing on all the targets. However, piercing shots got removed, and they said that they were going to change it to something crit-based. I don't know what that means, but that was what was said. And then it turns out that they changed piercing shots to something that involves chimera shot, which... Eh, right? Like, so enhanced piercing shots, which was the one that was going to allow your multi shots to also trigger your piercing shots, has now been changed to a chimera shot perk, which is <laughs> increases the damage done by your chimera shot by 20%. Why? You had the perfect opportunity to make Marksman's AoE respectable. I imagine you're going to balance it well, like you have been doing with the changes so far, but you just make it a passive chimera shot damage boost. Oh, Blizzard, why? I was so excited for Marksmanship, and after this, it was just like, oh, okay. But wait, there's more! So also, getting just ripped out of my lifeless hands here, uh, Chimera Shot no longer heals us. We don't get the heal bonus from Chimera Shot. I imagine the glyph that increases the healing from my Chimera Shot is going to be um, redesigned as well. And Concussive Barrage has also been removed. So you guys remember when you used to AoE as Marksman, you'd get the Daze on the targets, which was amazing for kiting AoE packs. I remember big time using this in uh, Throne of the Four Winds on Heroic Council before Alakir, when the adds on the Earth side respond. You definitely, definitely kited as Marksman, big time. Um, or like soloing the Firelands trash, when that was the thing with the Scorpion packs, kiting as Marksman with the uh, Daze was amazing because it was always up. And it's just a sad day today. Um, we fly our hunter flags at half mast because uh, bummer is why. Because bummer. Um, and I lost a little hope today because they were such good changes. I, why would they change something so good? Um, and it's not over yet. It's still alpha. We're not even in beta. And there's a lot of chances and opportunities for this to change. And I hope that they are vocalized because they need to be. It was going so well. Um, and, and that is the sad state that Marksman currently is in right now. Uh, so there is that. But with that sad story out of the way, let's talk a little bit about some of the tier bonuses that were re-released this week. And Hunter's tier bonuses got a massive revamp. They were so bland before, as they usually are with the first tier, because they're not trying to throw in, like, crazy tier bonuses at the start of an expansion that may alter your rotation or your gameplay because everything is new and they still want you to get acclimated to the new changes and stuff like that. However, they did redesign all of the tier bonuses, and i got to say, man, very impressive work here. Uh, I really enjoyed the Beast Mastery one. I'll read all of them off to you guys, but they're, they're pretty sweet. Yeah, check this out. So the Beast Mastery two-piece is Kill Command has a 25% chance to increase the size and damage of your pet by 10%, and then it goes on to say, for until cancelled. Um, hang on a second. Hold the phone here. So you're saying every Kill Command I do has a 25% chance to increase the size and damage of my pet for until the fight is over or until canceled. Why would we cancel it, right? So what this means is that we could theoretically have an instance where <laughs> our pet... So say a fight lasts 9 minutes and we can do 10 kill commands a minute. That's 90 kill commands. What is 90 times 10%? 900% increased damage in size. This thing's going to be, one, as big as the instance, and two, it's going to be dealing an insane amount of damage. I don't know if there's, like, some internal proc in here that's going to prevent this from going just ape bleep, but uh, I'm already a huge fan of this if it can. It, it has a little bit of RNG into survival, where some parses, I imagine, are going to be, like, off the wall because someone had a really good run with their two-piece in BM and others didn't, but... Um, 
as much as as much as you guys know, I do not like RNG. It's something I can live with for just a tier piece. It's not going to last forever. Um, and then the four piece is also really cool too, but it's kind of something that's very um, interesting. It's, it's not entirely clear as to what it does. And it reads, while Bestial Wrath is active, one additional pet is summoned to help fight with you. Okay, cool. DPS increase in short, right? Right. So, but what this means is it, 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 two things can happen here. One is the pet that is summoned acts as just a basic um, combat pet, much like Dire Beast is, where it just deals, um, you know, basic physical damage off of your attack power at the time. Or um, it's going to summon an actual dynamic secondary pet, which I'm going to think is not going to happen. And the reason I think this is because remember when Stampede was initially launched in, in MOP and. Over time, they nerfed Stampede so much, like, where if you summoned five pets, their abilities could not be used at this point anymore. Remember, like, you could be able to cast um, Spirit Men with Stampede, and all five of the Stampede pets would cast Spirit Men on the target, in addition to the one that your pet casted as well. Um, and they changed that. They got rid of that. So my idea would be that they're not going to go down that road again, and it's just going to be, like, a Dire Beast pet. But it, it could surprise me, but I wouldn't bank on it. Um... They haven't released the Marksmanship 2-piece yet, but the 4-piece is very awesome. Aim shot critical strikes have a chance to call down an artillery strike on your target. Dealing 10 damage... Okay, that's probably just a tooltip error, but approximately it's going to be an R RPPM. So it's going to have an RPPM on it. So um, what I like about this is I hope that we will finally see the return of Volley. Perhaps not in its identical... Um, physical image that it was in Wrath of the Lich King, but I would like to see a uh, throwback to it, very much so. Um, I miss Folly, even though I don't think uh, Multishot is bad, I still miss Folly. Um, it doesn't, it was awesome. Anyway, so that's the Marksmanship 4-piece, and Survival has both 2 and 4-piece up. The 2-piece is very bland, um, increases the focus restored from your Serpent Sting by 2, okay, hippie skippy. Um, and the survival uh, four piece is when you hit a target with the explosive shot, you gain the rapid shot effect, and rapid shot just increases your haste by 10% and it stacks. It does not say how much it stacks though, so um, just a haste benefit. Which is, I mean, a, a DPS increase. Not very fun, but still a passive DPS increase. But with those out of the way, the moment you've all been waiting for, let's talk about the Hunter Tier 17. Um, the Mythic Tier. Not Because what they did was they made uh, a normal tier set for classes and a Mythic Tier set for classes. Um, and the Mythic one was released. And let's talk about it. Um, first, let me start by saying art is subjective. I think the only thing people can agree on in art is when someone looks at the Mona Lisa and go, yeah, that's going to be an extensive piece of art. And the guy goes, yeah. Terrible analogy, but that's like the only time someone's going to agree on art. Because I said on Twitter, oh, I love this set. And people, it's ugly, you know. Hey, apples and oranges, right? Totally different things. So what I want to talk about in the Hunter Tier 17 Mythic set it appears to be Chimera or Rylac, you know, the new Chimeras, they're called Rylacs themed, it, very much so. There are lots of horns on it, kind of a um, throwback to the Tier 14 set, the Yongle Stalker, where they had the, uh, you know, the Torn Brother species horns on our, sh our helm and our shoulders, which was kind of neat, but I think this one's a lot cooler, and because it is Warlords of Draenor and the Iron Horde, you know, have and are planning to invade Azeroth, it's very Iron Horde-y. Our belt seems to be like a turbine, like a jet turbine, which is a little off-putting, but I think it goes with the Iron Horde theme they're going for. Granted, this is the farthest thing from a woodsman set you're going to see, but um, I like how they changed it up. A lot of the times you see our hunter sets, you know, Gron Stalker, uh, Scourge Stalker, uh, Dragon Stalker, they just slap on whatever we just killed onto our armor. And this isn't the case. There's metal working in the Rylax and Jaws, and I like the horns and um, the metal and stuff. The metal working is something we haven't seen since Ulduar uh, Skirt Stalker, uh, which is kind of neat. I mean, it's not the best dang tier set I've ever seen, nor is it, I think, the most hunter tier set I've ever seen, but I still think it has a theme, and it sticks with it, and it does it well. Um, and you guys can find the Hunter Tier 17 Mythic set on MMO Champion. I think it's going to still be on the front page by the time you guys all hear this. Um, but I've, I enjoy it. 
I, I don't have many bad things to say about it. I think it's done well. I like the Rylac. The jaws are on fire, and our jet turbine is on fire. And um, the horns are very cool, you know, curved and, and menacing. It's very savage. You know, that's like the big warlords of Draenor term. It is very savage looking, um, which I'm down for. So I like it. I think that's my opinion on the Hunter 217 Mythic. And with that said, let's get into some listener questions, shall we? All right, so let's take it from emails first. I have an email from Dark Brew who wants to know, um, I don't know if you've answered this before, but at what gear level should I consider switching from crit to mastery for BM? I have a 574 item level, and various sims like Female Dwarf have very have the two very close, excuse me, but I feel like I might be better off reforging from crit to mastery. Keep up the great work. So, when, let me get, let's, let's first say one thing. So, for Beast Mastery, our stat priorities are haste, max it out, and then equal out your crit and your mastery levels. So what this means is I have about 18,000 haste, and I have about 9,000 mastery and about 7,000 crit. Um, if I remember right, it's, it's about those levels. Um, and that's our magic formula that we want to go after. And when I switched from a crit build to a haste build, I did that at about 560 item level. But it depends a lot on what pieces you have, like what gear you are using. Um, for one, uh, like it just depends on what tier gear you have and what off pieces you have. Like there is a chest off of Garrosh that has a ton of haste on it. There are the uh, bracers from Siege Crafter that have a ton of haste on them. There are there's the ring off of Paragons that have a ton of haste on them. It just depends on what you can work with and when you can get over that hump. I think what you want to shoot for before when you do this is about excuse me, it's about thirteen to fourteen thousand haste is when it becomes better to use this with a with conjunction of blink strikes. That haste build becomes very powerful with your pet's basic attacks. That's the main kicker of the haste build. And then once you do that, you just ma- you equalize your crit and your haste. Or excuse me, your crit and your mastery. Excuse me, crit and mastery is what you want to equal out. And there's something I want to mention that kind of segues into this. Uh, I have it on the site and the hunter resources as well, but a lot of people want to know how to like min-max your hunter or how to use simulation tools like Female Dwarf and SimCraft. And I want to talk about SimCraft really quick, uh, quickly because what SimCraft can do is it can it can balance or excuse me it can weigh your secondary stats as to which is more valuable and beneficial with all of your current stats and your gear. And it's a very impressive tool for this. And there is a video. Avrelia did the video. He's a warlock on YouTube, and he made a how to use SimCraft video, and it is on the website if you guys want to check it out. It's in the Hunter Resources section. And um, it's it's amazing that you know you can run a you know a ten thousand iteration simulation on your character to figure out what, which of your secondary stats is more valuable and how you should weigh them and how you should reforge. And the video breaks it all down. I could spend twenty minutes talking about it, but he does it just as well. Um, and I recommend you guys check that out if you want to kind of work with your stats. I mean, there is a basic principle you can follow for every spec. You know. Survival and marksman favor crit. BM goes major, you know, major haste, and then it bounces out with crit and ma- or yeah, crit and mastery. Um, and and so I mean, there are basic theories or uh, you know formulas you can follow. But if you wanted to get really in depth and precise and to the T, SimCraft is a great tool for this because it tells you exactly what's you know at certain stat levels your DPS is going to increase by 500 DPS or 800. And it's just a if you want to get into min maxing, I highly recommend it. Like just as an example, if you run the simulation and you and you want to value, you know, mastery and crit, what it'll do is it'll it'll plot a chart for you and it'll say if you gain eight hundred more crit at the loss of, you know, five hundred mastery or whatever, or six hundred, seven hundred mastery, I'm trying to remember what SimCraft looks like. But anyway, it says if you if you give up this for this, you will gain nine hundred DPS at this level. If you gave up maybe a thousand crit for a thousand mastery your, your DPS would only go up by 300, so it changes, right? And that's the beauty of SimCraft, is it is so precise. I mean, where else can you get a tool like this? I mean, this isn't just going off a of whimsy or anything like that. It is, you know, a uh, formula, a very mathematical-driven, I don't understand this formula that is just, at, it's out of this world, and there's no other resource like it. So if that's something that you might be interested in, go check out the video, download SimCraft, and... Uh, and give it a support, you know, give it a whirl. It's really cool. Next question comes from Keldul on Twitter, kind of following the same context here. He goes, um, what is the best way to evaluate stat weights and priority use? Easiest way? And he wants to know, Swimcraft is good for numbers or is Female Dwarf easier? And Female Dwarf is a very good tool to use for Hunter and DPS evaluations as well. I like it a lot better for evaluating which gear I should be wearing, especially at the start of a tier. Um, 
A very good example of this is say I have a, um, for example, like I, I have a LFR tier piece and they're like gloves. So I have gl LFR gloves and they're tier piece. And the gloves I would be replacing would be, say, heroic or, you know, maybe Warforge level. And, but the gloves are going to grant me my two piece. Well, okay, I'll run Female Zorf with the gloves and without the gloves, and I'll see what the benefit is here. Or, for example, you have, like, you know, maybe a ring and a boots, but one ring, the ring is lesser item level than the ring you have, but it's got a socket in it. I'm, I'm just using these as an example. I think for a lot of hunters, Female Dwarf is really good for saying, okay, Female Dwarf, what gear should I be using right now? I have a couple pieces in my bags that I have. I don't know if I should be wearing them or not. Things like that are very important. And I think it's good. It's a very good tool to use to evaluate this kind of stuff. And I think my last example for this would be going into Siege of Orgrimmar, I had a couple pieces of Heroic Thunder Forge gear. Remember from Throne of Thunder? And that's a 549 item level when it was upgraded at the start of Siege. But say you got your tier piece from LFR, but that was only a, what is that, a 520, 528 item level. And, and you know, that's a, that's a drastic change in item level. And it was like a 400 agility difference as well to boot. And, you know, so you, you, you wanted to weigh, okay, well, hang on a second. I just, I just don't know off the top of my head. Female Dwarf helped me out here. And it would do just that. And that's why I like to use Female Dwarf because of that reason alone. All right, let's take some Twitter questions now. So Dark Brew asks, hello, Dark Brew again. Question for the show. Which log site do you use? World of Logs, Warcraft Logs, or both? Is one more accepted over the other? And what should people use? Now, Warcraft Logs is the new logging site that just came out for the community. It is very in-depth, incredibly in-depth, absolutely informative. There's, like, video replays of your raid's position, and you can see how the, you know, position and movement went down, which is incredibly handy for seeing, you know, reaction times of, you know, who moved out of the fire the quickest, who stayed there too long, who was in the wrong place at the wrong time. Um, and that's incredible. But if, in terms of analyzing damage and stuff like that, absolutely Warcraft Logs. Superior in all ways to World of Logs. Um, now, World of Logs is also a little gimped. There are very easy ways to cheese the meters with World of Logs in terms of ranking. Like, the top five Malkarok ranks are, like, 30-second clips of a fight, which is totally, you know, as you can imagine, BS, and that's how they got their top rank. So, Warcraft Logs, I believe, is, is just superior in all, in all measures. Um, it has a very thorough, um, in-depth breakdown as to, you know, where you've, where you've placed your damage. It's uh, amazing. And the one thing I really like most about Warcraft Logs is that it can even tell you very easily um, certain dynamics of a fight, like what happened on, like, say, Heroic Garrosh. It'll tell you uh, breakdowns of the transitions, the intermissions phases. And they'll say, okay, well, this got, you know, this um, ad got its cast off, and that's why we wiped. So it'll tell you, you know, where did this happen? If, you know, your raid doesn't want to maybe fess up to it, or you honestly had no idea what happened, then it'll, it'll tell you, okay, here's why you wiped. And it offers a suggestion, interrupt the ad. You know, it'll, it'll give you a tip, but it's it's very it's very um, handy resource to have, and I highly recommend getting familiar with Warcraft logs. It, it takes some getting used to, uh, especially if you're moving from World of Logs over to Warcraft logs. But um, highly recommended, highly recommended. But in terms of analyzing logs, I think analyzing logs is something we can also go over too. I mean, it's important to see what your uptimes look like, what your debuff and buff uptimes look like, your you know your ability usage. Like for for beast mastery, whenever we get like guild apps or stuff like that, and their hunters are always checking out. Okay, how long was the fight, and how many co commands did they use? Because it's important to be able to maximize GCDs appropriately as beast mastery or survival. I take a look. Okay, well, how many um, black arrows did they clip? Especially with assurance of consequence, and especially with um, buff uptimes and stuff like that. You can see, oh, they had a trinket proc up, and Black Gara wasn't, like, recast to get that extra benefit of the trinket proc. Like, they, uh, did they recast Black Gara when they had a benefit to do so? Things like that, and that's what's important about log analyzing, is being able to milk out as much as you can from your character, and being able to make those analyzations, then come back the next night and change those observations, or, you know, change based off of those observations, and that's, and that's what's strong about log, anal log analyzation, excuse me. Um, and I think that's a discussion definitely worth talking about. And lastly, I don't want to derail the show too much, but I wanted to mention um, SaberGolf on Twitter asked, Hey Solar, I usually only play Hunter, and I'm looking to branch out to another DPS, range DPS. What would be the logical choice? Um, and I told them Destruction Warlock. Now, one, Warlocks are crazy OP right now. But two, Destruction Warlock plays so much like survival, it's not even funny. Um... For example, I compare Immolate to Serpent Sting. It is the dot you want to keep up at all times. 
Curse of Elements is a lot like Hunter's Mark. It's just something that you put on your target to increase your damage dealt to it and magic damage taken. And Conflag is a two charge based ability that is a lot like our explosive shot is. You just use it on cooldown. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not talking like Mega Theory Craft Warlock here. Just just go with me. Easy to play, having fun. It's a lot like Hunter Class. So yeah. And, and, and Incinerate is another ability like that the Warlocks have that is very similar to Cobra Shot in that it's just a filler spell. You just cast it when you have nothing else to cast. And then Chaos Bolt is something you use to, you know, expend embers on. Not a very hard concept to grasp, even for us hunters. You know, wink, wink. It's a little nudge towards our, our class's uh, stereotype. And then they have Shadow Burn, which is like an execute, just like Kill Command is. Or, excuse me, Kill Shot is. And then there's, like, one other really have, like, Havoc, which is something you can do is to cast uh, multiple abilities on another target. Warlocks are pretty cool. And I wanted just to say, hey, guys, if you're bored, give a Warlock a spin, because I thought the Destruction played a lot like Survival. So there it is. Thank you, Saber Golf, for asking that question. I thought it was a neat little addition to the show. And before we disembark here, I just wanted to mention, if you guys have ever wanted to get, like, a log analyzation, or uh, you want to, like, have me take a look at your, your kill video, or, like, an attempt on a boss, or a training dummy, or something like that... Um, and get feedback on it, feel free to send it into the show's email. I'll be more than happy to do so. I've already had a couple hunters come to me uh, with vlogs. I've had even one guy where I said, hey, you know, go to a training dummy and record like three minutes of your rotation. And then, you know, go to your show on your raid night, just record some of your boss footage. And I'll take a look at it and I'll give you feedback. Because they came to me and they're like, hey, Solar, how can I improve? And I'm like, well, I'll tell you the best way you can improve is let me see what you're actually doing, you know, play by play here. And they, and they loved it. So if you guys have any of this that you want to do, a vlog, video, send it to the show. More than happy to help. More than happy to help. And uh, I think that'll do it for this week's show. Before we take off completely, though, I just want to mention thank you all for tuning in. It's always a pleasure to be able to share and record with you guys. And don't forget about the website. Give it a look, cloakandquiver.com. And be sure, if you're interested, I would love for you guys to send in stories or maybe you know reminiscing of old memories as a hunter, um, any hunter-based contributions that you guys would like to share to the community, uh, by all means, uh, get cooking. So um, I think that will do it for this week's show. I will see you guys next week. I really hope I can get another episode in when I find time. Like I'm telling you guys, I'm working 50 hours a week and the strangest hours, and uh, it's been a little hardcore for me. So again, thank you guys for tuning in. I will catch you on the flip side and see you guys next time. See you guys next time. See you guys next time. See you guys next time.